What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another day, another episode of 30 NSG. On today's show, uh, we're going to be talking about... It. I, I, made the, I made the title. I made all the stuff. But uh, The Verge just came out with an article uh, called Sony wants 60 frames uh, on the PlayStation 5 Pro Enhanced games, but is happy to settle for less. Uh, Tom Warren uh, just came out with this literally just a couple of minutes ago. So we're going to throw that in the mix. Uh, we're going to talk about Fallout 76. It's an all-time player count record on Steam following Fallout TV series on Amazon. We're also going to talk about Lawbreakers, playable again for the first time in six years, thanks to a fan project. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about Ubisoft responds as Star Wars Outlaws comes under fire for Jabba the Hutt's season pass exclusive. If you guys like what I do here, I do this Monday through Thursday. We just read over... Uh, you know, news articles. I read them on for the first time on stream. Uh, and then I have a conversation, give you my thoughts, have a conversation with you guys in chat. If you like that, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to go above and beyond that, you become a member as little as $5. So what's going on? What's going on, Argus? What's going on, Eclipse? Dolphin, uh, Leo, Travis, Dave Rose, L. What's going on? Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's going on, Robert Jones? All right, so let's get uh, let's get started with the uh, with the first story, which I think is the Sony one we're going to talk about. Um, one thing you get with my show is that you get what's going on, Mo. Um, we we talk about the news faster than anybody else uh, on YouTube. Okay, because literally, as stuff comes in, we just talk about it, and you'll see articles come out after the fact. So you get my opinions first for most majority of the stuff. Um. Good or bad, uh, I bring it to the attention before anybody else, I would think. I mean, I'm like Twitter, okay? Like, literally, Twitter, show, go live type of stuff. So, all right, so let's start off. Let's start off with uh, Sony, okay? So, this article comes from The Verge. Sony wants 60 frames per second PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced games, but it's happy to settle for less. Okay, so the PlayStation 5 Pro will also have an ultra boost mode for games that don't get enhancements. Okay, so Sony is working on a new high-end version of the PlayStation 5 codenamed Trinity. It's likely to debut on PlayStation 5 Pro later this year. Now, The Verge confirmed leaked specs about the PlayStation 5 Pro earlier this week, and they've also obtained details on how exist, uh, uh, existing and... Uh, yeah, existing as the new PlayStation 5 games can also be enhanced. So take advantage of the PlayStation 5 Pro hardware... Sony is also working on the Ultra Boost mode for also older games to make them run better on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, sources familiar with Sony plans tell The Verge that Sony is asking for developers to create a PlayStation 5 Pro exclusive graphic mode in games that combine Sony's new PlayStation Spectral Re Super uh, Resolution, or the PSSR, upscaling to 4K resolution with 60 frames per second frame rate and ray tracing effects. Insider Gamer also reported, uh, first reported on some of these enhanced PlayStation 5 Pro game details last month. Now, while Sony wants the new mode in games and PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced labeled will still be available for a variety of other scenarios, including the 30 frames per second games. Now, developers have the option to increase the target resolution for PlayStation 5 Pro games that run at a fixed resolution on the PlayStation 5 for even increasing the target maximum resolution for games that run at a variable resolution on PlayStation 5. Now, that could mean we see a PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced games that run at between 1080p and 1440p resolution at 30 frames per second on the base PlayStation 5 and run between uh, 1280p and 2160p on the PlayStation 5 Pro at the same frame rate. A fixed resolution increase from 1440p to 2160p would also qualify PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced games. Developers could also choose to enable ray tracing effects and get the PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced labeled without improving resolution or frame rates. Now, if a developer wants to target 60 frames instead of 30 frames with the same resolution, this may also qualify the PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced game. Now, simply running a game at more uh, stable frame rates on PlayStation 5 Pro is not enough for the enhanced label. Though Sony also won't add the label of the games to run with a variable resolution and see increased resolution on the PlayStation 5 Pro, that doesn't improve the maximum resolution. So if game moves from 1440p to 2160p, variable to 1800 or 2160, variable this is also will not qualify as enhanced labeled. 
So developers need to update their games to Sony's latest SDK to take advantage of the PlayStation 5 Pro features. But some games have been updated will also benefit from the be uh, better performance for upcoming console. Now, he says, I understand that the PlayStation 5 Pro will have an ultra boost mode that will also help the VRR mode run at a higher frame rate. And games will also be very resolution, uh, variable resolution and may render high resolutions. Overall, frame rates may be more stable in certain games. Okay. He continues by saying, uh, Sony does warn developers that many unpatched games won't show improvements of the ultra boost mode, though games that run at the fixed resolution and graphical settings for fixed rendering resolutions won't show improvements. Even if the developers remain on older versions of Sony SDK, they can still utilize the PSSR to upscale titles and get access to the additional system memory that Sony is offering game developers. Now, the requirement for the PlayStation 5 Pro Enhanced label seems largely similar to what Sony did for the PlayStation 4 Pro and also some clearly flexible uh, flexibility here to developers that can pick what they want to improve. And if the game qualifies for enhanced label, it also gets to display disc packaging and Sony PlayStation Store pages. So here, here is my thoughts on this, right? Now, obviously, I've always said that where Xbox is going, they're going for the more middle market type stuff, right? Where people, more affordable, play where you want, doesn't really matter. They're not going for the high-end gamers, right? I've always said that Sony goes for that high-end tier of gamers. So this is why they do the $500 system. This is why they you, you need a PSVR 2. You need a PlayStation 5. You have a PlayStation Portal. You need a PlayStation 5. They know their clientele, okay? Sony says, okay, we're going to give you guys 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to give you higher resolution. We're going to give you better stuff on this system. And... Obviously, they gotta they gotta knock it up a niche, right? Because they they're trying to hit their goal, get more console sales. But they're also, I hear this enhanced, right? This enhanced label. Now, I'm not saying they're doing this, but I can see them doing this. Okay, we're we're talking about in the industry how games went up to seventy dollars, and now people are talking about we can even go to eighty dollar games. Now, I can see the PlayStation uh, company putting an enhanced label on video games and then putting on the PlayStation 5 Pro, if you get the enhanced edition, I can see that going up in price to an $80 game for the enhanced version because they're giving you better resolution. They're giving you better that they were talking about 8K. Um, so I can see PlayStation going the route of this. Now, look, I think this is great for uh, the market, but at the same time, if you're a gamer, Games are already doing this on the PC. Now, the problem is Sony doesn't put their day games day and date on PC. Now, if you wait a little bit down the road, you're a PC gamer, you're going to get this and you get all stuff anyway when you're on PC. But now as a console owner, right, this is obviously leaps and bounds ahead of the Switch, leaps and bounds ahead of Xbox, what they can do right now with the system that they have. Now, I do find it like a niched market. Again, you're trying to... People that have a PlayStation 5 right now are probably going to trade in their PlayStation 5 and get a PlayStation 5 Pro. It all depends on where the price point is for the new PlayStation 5 Pro. Is it going to be that Apple mentality where the new system comes out and the old system drops in price and this one comes in at $500? Does this one, is this one $550? Is this $600? have no idea as of right now. I kind of think they do the Apple mentality where they just bring it in at 500. If they go above that, I don't feel like they're going to grow the player base. I just feel like they're going to get the people that are already in their player base and you're going to get you're going to grow a little bit, but you're not going to grow the masses if you go above that. Now, if you keep it at the $500 price range, I think obviously, I think you're going to get people to buy the new system. But here's also the problem now. Because it's been 4 years and people that were struggling up until 2023 still trying to get PlayStations in certain regions. They couldn't even get a PlayStation 5, okay? Now the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out. Let's say it comes out this holiday season. People that have a PlayStation 5 are going to try to get a PlayStation 5 Pro because they want to keep up with the Joneses. New people are going to try to get the PlayStation 5 Pro because that's the newest and latest, greatest thing, okay? And yet, there's going to be a shortage again, right? 100% there's going to be a shortage because they're not going to be able to, have to push all this stuff out. So then people are going to struggle Right, And there's going to be this like second market. People are going to try to sell their PlayStation 5s. And again, this happens all the time. But that's what's going to happen because there's not going to be enough PlayStation 5 Pros because they don't want to make so many of them and not know if they're going to sell or not. Right? PlayStations have slowed down in sales in the last couple of months. 
but we'll see what happens. I do think this is really good for PlayStation because they're still in the console war by themselves, okay? But they've, they've established themselves, their brand is high quality gaming on a console, right? Is that That's what they're selling. So this is what they have to stick with. They have to stick with the, keep putting the high end stuff into the consoles to give the latest, greatest uh, experience. If it's the haptic feedback, if it's the resolution, if it's the frames per second, it's all this stuff. Sony has to keep doing this because this is this is what they're known for. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. What do you think of PlayStation 5 Pro uh, with this enhanced name where developers can make the enhance uh, to, to go up higher, even with their older games? Or do you think that this is just a, a word that's, you know, just to change it uh, market-wise? Do you think they're going to raise the price up to $80 with this enhanced label on PlayStation games? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like what I do here, please make sure you share, like, subscribe, and check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. All right, chat. What do you guys think here? <clears throat> what a coincidence. Not to 30. Ultra boost, so it's going super, yeah. I mean, the games better insane, uh, better be insane as hell if they can't get to 60 frames per second on the current Gen Pro console. 10% CPU uh, marked Cerny cooking bottleneck my ass. Uh, Kylo says, oh boy, here we go. The Pro that has five years old processor in it. Trebby says, Travis can say it's overhyped, but Goku was sick. Okay, uh, what's going on, Lurker? Good morning, 30. Good morning. Rose says, I mean, most of the games on PlayStation 5 already run 60 frames per second or have performance mode. So this is even better compared to Xbox. That drops everything at 30. But again, they're going for completely two different markets, right? They're both in the gaming industry, Rose, but Xbox is going for play anywhere and PlayStation's going for high-end market on their console, right? Yeah, buy a $600 machine and we want 60 frames per second, but we're glad if it's a little bit less. Yeah, because they said that you don't have to hit it, right? It says you, you can settle for less. You can settle for less. PlayStation 5 Pro will be 650. You think so, Hell? Hellspawn thinks PlayStation 5 Pro will be a 650. Ron says just buy a Lenovo uh, Legion, ROG Ally, if you're spending $700. Kyle says uh, make no sense because you get the performance on a PC and the game's still 60 bucks. Right. You're not wrong there, Kylo, but the problem is PlayStation doesn't do day and date, so you, you gotta wait, right? $650 is the price I heard through sources. Console gaming, where you pay to use online features, which you already pay your ISP, uh, and you pay more or less to performance. Robert Jones says, so this is the only for new games? They said that you can they can update it for their older games, but I don't know if, I don't know if older company I don't know if the companies would go back and do that with their older games. You know what I mean? Who knows, Jones? I think it's going to be just for games that are in the market, like uh, that are in production right now, that they can kind of change it. Who knows? Argus says I'm a tech uh, enthusiast, so I do enjoy having the best tech I can. Although, I hate having to support Sony. Eclipse says, well, PC gaming is playing Fallout 4 at 60 frames per second with 800 mods. So I can't wait for your all console to get that. <laughs> Go on, Titan. GTA 6 will be free bundled with Pro next year. You think so? I don't, that's not really free. They usually put the cost of the game inside the system. Or they'll take a loss in the system to put the game there. Do you think they're going to get the exclusive Titan? you think uh, PlayStation is going to pay the money for Grand Theft Auto 6 exclusive? I don't know. That's going to be a lot of money up front. Leo says, are we expecting a PlayStation 5 Pro to have significantly better graphics, more frames? That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. I would like more hard drive space, but that's me. Carlos has been playing Fallout 4 at 1440p, 120 frames per second. It's lovely. 600, 600 setting, uh, sitting right. Sounds like a guy who's never played a PC game before. 
They just released a slim version. Every year we get a new PlayStation. 250 with a PlayStation 5 trade in. See, I kind of think they're going to be at the 500 mark. I'm telling you, I don't see if they if they price it too high, people can people can go up a little bit more and get something, you know what I mean? They'll be like, "Ah, for another $200, I can get this," you know? I don't know. I don't know. I think they I think a lot of people, I th I think a small percentage of people that have a PlayStation 5 right now will upgrade to a PlayStation 5 Pro. Everybody else that already has a PlayStation 5 will wait till that thing dies and they're never going to change. Okay? Just because the way the industry and the market is where you got to show us what you have, right? And is it worth going up to just get like one or two games first party titles, right? Is it is it worth going up for just, you know, Two, two games a year from PlayStation. Because you would think that even when this come out, when, even when this comes out, people that are making a game right now are not going to get to the full potential of what the PlayStation... They don't, they're not even at the full potential of the PlayStation 5 right now and the Xbox Series X. And yet, now they're making a PlayStation 5 Pro and the Xbox making the next thing. Not until the end of the life cycle of this system do people start tapping into the full resources that they actually can do. Ramsey says, no way it's 500. Once you get past 500, it defeats the purpose of a console. Right. I think if they price it too high, okay, in the market right now with people complaining about, you know, financially where people are, okay, just the, the state of the world, going up to $600, 650 for a console, I think that's a hard sell, man. The base model will drop to 450 and the Pro will be 600 650 I think they just stop. I think they stopped making the PlayStation 5 in general. Right? Whatever's out, in the, whatever's out in the world is out in the world. And then they just start selling the PlayStation 5 Pro. Rachel says the PlayStation 5 Pro did unlock the frames per second, I believe. PlayStation 5 Pro is going to end up like the PSVR 2. You think so, Ron? You don't think it's going to sell very well? I mean, the PSVR 2 didn't sell well, but that's not because of the system. That's because of just VR in general. Come on, Rowick. Rowick says, good morning. I switched to PC, and I don't care or wait uh, to wait. just gives me time to fix after it's released. That's true. That's true, Rowick. Water says, exclusive for three years. I don't think that'll ever happen. You're talking about Grand Theft Auto 6, Water. That'll, that'll never happen. Three years? I say never say never, but Rocks, Rocksteady will never do that. They would never sign an exclusive to kill their sales, especially since they're approaching 200 million sales with Grand Theft Auto V. There's no way. They want to hit that number faster than ever. Right? People are saying the PlayStation 5 was going to be 500 plus because the leap in performance to end... Uh, be, do you guys remember... When they announced the PlayStation 5 and people said it would be $1,200. Do we, we all forget this, right? Goldfish brain has kicked in, right? People said that the last system, four years ago, right? Said that it was going to be $1,000, $1,200. And then magically it became $500. Base PlayStation 5 will be 400 and Pro will be 500. Clip it. Ship it. You heard it here first. Water says, I'll be uh, one for upgrading for sure. Well, sure, Water. You're 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 keeping up with the Joneses. Like you're keeping up with the with the latest greatest tech. Or <laughs> Hellspawn says, or you could wait for the PlayStation 6. Yeah? I'll say less than 600 or 600. 650 is too much. Sarge says that's originally the selling point. A $500 console that runs PC like graphics was affordable, but now uh, you're not showing the value of $500 console right now. So why buy one? Krebsy says uh, PlayStation 5 with less features that released in the market where the dollar was worth uh, more uh, was 500. No chance the Pro isn't 600. 
I don't know, 30. That SpongeBob $700 Xbox sold quick. Yeah, it sells quick if they make 100 of them. And people like SpongeBob. That's a collector's... Five seventy-five tops. That just doesn't sound right. That just doesn't sound right, Roic. I don't. I don't remember anything ever being like a seventy-five. You go whole numbers. You go three ninety-nine, four ninety-nine, five ninety-nine. You don't go, or you go in the midway point, right? Like two forty-nine, three forty-nine, four forty-nine. You know what I mean? Like you don't go with a seventy-five. People were $800 scalper prices for the PlayStation 5. Don't 650 will be an issue. They're going to double dip as soon as they can get made so much money off the Red Dead Redemption 2 and Grand Theft Auto 5 on PC. I never heard 1200. What do you, Come on, man. Which people said 1200? You don't You guys have goldfish brain. You guys have goldfish brain. Right? There was little people back in like 2018 talking about, oh, the next PlayStation is going to have this in it. It's going to be like $1,000, $1,200. Come on. Let me see. You see, this is what I hate about the internet. That's what I hate about the internet. When you when you do a search for something, just current events, just current stuff comes up. I gotta go back, back to the way back machine. No one takes those people saying $1,200 seriously. Titan, that's not the point. There was literally articles written, articles that people read. Okay. Said that the, the system's gonna be. Dave Rose says, yep, I remember people trying to trash the PlayStation 5 saying it's gonna cost 1200 bucks after they showed what the console looked like. We're talking about before the, the console even was even shown. People are like, oh, the next PlayStation is going to be like $1,200, $1,000. I think those people are the same people who think a car is worth $200. Whatever it is. Come on, Mr. Luke. Rowick says... Five sixty nine ninety nine. That's not. That's not a thing. That sounds horrible. Sounds horrible. People look at that and go, "The hell is that price?" You either gotta raise it up to five ninety nine or lower it to five forty nine. Is this the same people that said the Xbox Series X is the most powerful console? Hellspawn, back then, before before any consoles are seen, right? They said weird things about the Xbox, weird things about the PlayStation. They're like, the next consoles are going to be $1,000, $1,200 with the processors that they have in there, right? And everyone's like, it's like the same conversations over and over again, right? People back then were like, well, you might as well just buy a PC. You could build a PC for $1,100, it's the same talking points over and over and over every time a console comes out. Here, I'll mark it now 
because I'll probably be streaming when the PlayStation 6 comes out and then people start talking about how we're going to have an $1,100 system for the PlayStation 6 and then it comes out and it's like $500 or $600 again and people are like, there's no way, right? It's the same conversation over and over and over. Oh, Travis, you like that? You like that? I love people that come into one of my videos that t tell me you watch the video without watching the video, right? They, they make a comment about something in the video, right? That I actually said, but they didn't watch the video. So they make a comment. Now he did watch the clip. Okay. And he could have went to the, he could have went to the actual video and then literally listen to me say the exact same thing he typed. I love it though. And then when they know they're wrong, they make fun of your education and they make a mom joke. Just what it is. Now I'll believe that, Krebsy. <laughs> There's no disk drive. It's a credit card swiper. <laughs> yeah, Xbox and, and PlayStation are like, oh, what is this? Is this a disk drive? Oh, no, no, no. That's for your credit card. You insert your credit card in there. Yeah, microtransaction tips. Yeah. I have a short coming out. I have a short coming out. Make sure you guys uh watch that. It's at, at 12:45. It'll 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 go live. Well, it's it's not a it's not a it doesn't go out to notifications. But I I I think I think uh, the short gets I I think we could get people either upset, mad, make fun of me in some way, shape, or form, or click on the video. One of those things will happen. Credit card scanners instead of disk drives. I can believe that, yeah. I can see it happening. To unlock the full potential of PlayStation 6, you must subscribe to PlayStation Plus Premium. You know, Krebsy, that you say that, right? And I know it's a joke, right? But I was watching uh, the Percy Jackson thing on Disney Plus, right, with my son. I, I, I talked about it, you know, this weekend we watched it. And when I tell you that, like, when you hit play, it, like, loads and it's crystal clear, right? It's crystal clear. And then all of a sudden, it does a little, you know, spin wheel, right? And then all of a sudden, it goes pixelated. And then it stays pixelated the entire time. Now, I play for high-speed internet, right? I get 450 by 21, okay? That's what, I, that's what I get, okay? It gets pixelated. And I'm looking at it going, I, I can't watch this. I said, I can't watch this. I was like, I, we pay for the show, okay, for the, for, the, uh, for the streaming service, and yet I'm getting pixelated stuff, right? And it, it pisses me off. Then you got to stop it. And then you got to start it again. And then all of a sudden it comes in crystal clear and like two minutes in and then it goes pixelated again. And I'm like, what in the hell? I do a, I do a speed test. Everything's fine. I'm like, why is it going? The goddamn streaming companies, not the cable companies, the streaming companies, they downgrade the actual video. Okay. On purpose. I'm paying for shittier viewing experience because of streaming services. And I have no choice, right? I have no choice. I bought a movie on YouTube once, admitted that I only got 720. Yeah, that, it, it pisses me off. Recent news is Disney Plus wants to bring channels back and add them to the service. There's a video I watched this morning by um, Chato, all right? I don't know if you guys know Chato. He's a Canadian guy who used to work and run a television network in Canada, right? And he gives his insights and stuff like that. I like listening to him just because I was in the business. He was in the business. I like listening to... And he goes on a video about how much problems the streaming services are in. 
Recent news, already read that. Premium already game features on PlayStation 5. Sarge says they slow it down on purpose. It's not even, well, it is, I guess, slowing it down, but yeah. They do it, bro, because people don't know what 720, 1080p, 4K. Let me, let me tell you this. My son and I, my wife's sitting there. She couldn't tell. She didn't, she couldn't tell. But then again, my wife is also uh, blind. Okay, like she, she is. Like if she takes her glasses off and she's not wearing her contacts, she, she literally sees like, take Vaseline and rub it on your eye. Like she, she's really bad. Okay. Now I'm assuming that most of America is like that because my son who is a kid and has like foreseen eyesight as soon as it happened, he goes, why is it pixelated? He literally said it verbally out loud. He's like, why is it pixelated? I said, I can't, I can't stand it. I was like, I had to stop it and pause, right? Pause and then start, pause and then start. And I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Seven twenty is the standard again. I'm telling you, even in video games, Rachel, I think video games and movies, because of the cloud, because they want to force this, and I said it's going to be the main thing, and people don't believe me, but because of the cloud, and the people want to force the cloud on us, they're going to downgrade stuff just so it works, because it, it takes so much server space and so much data to get the high speed, high stuff, okay, that they're going to make 30 frames per second but look beautiful with the, you know, motion blur and ray tracing and all this stuff. And movies are going to go back to 720, okay, just because it's cheaper for them. They put themselves in this box. They made the problem, and now they're selling the solution, right? You're paying $20 a month for 720 piece of shit viewing experience, and they're going to raise that price. Well, if you pay 30 you pay 30 you get the crystal clear Blu-ray experience. Fuck you. I will, I will, I will not watch anything. I don't care. I don't have to watch your shitty programming. At a blur, I'll go outside. I'll play catch. I'll go knit a fucking sweater. I'll go fix my car. Whatever. I'll do a thousand other things. I don't, I don't need to watch your shitty, blurry, pixelated, shitty streaming service. That's not his eyesight. That's your influence on him. He he saw it before I did. Like a split second ahead of time. Travis. Well, that no, no, no. Blu-ray disc look much better in Blu-ray stream. Absolutely. Absolutely. What was the uh, store you were... Uh... You were saying they would they would charge you for a cashier walmart walmart was thinking about charging you to be your own fucking self-checkout cashier <laughs> 30 in your opinion if i can only get one uh two xbox games coming to playstation 5 which is better see if thieves are grounded Sea of Thieves is a PvP game at its at its core. It's a PvP game. There's a section that's PvE, but it's a PvP game. Grounded is a 100% PvE game that you can get with your friends and play solo. So take that from what you want. People told me alcohol fixes the problem. Dave Cohen says, uh, that's, uh, that's because uh, streaming only isn't the best experience of games. The best option is to play them natively by downloading them. Sure. But at the same time, even when they're digital and they're streaming from the cloud, they're, they're going to condition us, Dave, to get a shittier product for the same price, if not more. Watch. Robert Jones says, first of all, fuck Walmart. They're thieves. <laughs> I saw Lono playing the other day and water alone makes Sea of Thieves worth it yeah Sea of Thieves is a beautiful game when you play that game it's beautiful YouTube changed the video quality settings for those who don't know what 3060, 720 and 1080p 
did they did they change it? Because I know right now I can go up to certain videos, 1080p, 60. I can go to 4K. Okay. All right, let's go for the next uh, the next story here. Okay. If you guys like what I do here, I cover news stories, conversations. If you like what I do, please make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you like to go above and beyond that, become a member as little as $5. Next story we're going to cover. We're going to cover Fallout 76 hits all-time player count record on Steam. Find the Fallout TV series on Amazon and other games are spiking too. Should be spiking as well. I don't know. I'm not the best grammar guy, but I thought it would be spiking as well. That's what I would read. Okay. So people like Fallout TV series on Amazon an awful lot. Uh, we call it the best Fallout since New Vegas, and it seems to be having quite a spillover effect on the Fallout video games. Okay. All the games in the long-running post-nuclear RPG series have been significantly jumped in players, and they also muscled up their way into the Steam's top-selling game chart. Now, the Steam DB noted that Twitter, uh, VI Eurogamer, that Fallout has more than doubled its concurrent players on Steam with the release of Fallout TV series. Now, I've always talked about this, right? When you take major brands, and we're talking Transformers, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, Teen Mutant Turtles, Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, you know what I mean? Marvel, DC, any of these major, major franchises, I always say they should always take these games and release them in correlation with something else cross-platform, meaning not cross-platform like Xbox to PC, cross the industry, like, like television shows, books, movies, whatever it is, they should always put it where they're combining them together. So for instance, I talked about Suicide Squad months and months ago. I said, Peacemaker season two doesn't come out till next year. I would have waited, okay, for Suicide Squad to come out later to correlate with DC TV shows, DVC, uh, DC movies, DC, you know what I mean? Like streaming service, whatever. That way, when you add Peacemaker into a game, it does cross promotion. People go back and forth. This is what people do. You saw it with The Witcher. You see it with Cyberpunk. You see it with now Fallout. Okay. Even Halo uh, had it with that crappier of the TV shows. Last of Us was a big success. More people went back and played Last of Us, right? This is why people look at it and go, oh, I want, I want to play that. And they, and they go, what? Is there, there's a Fallout game? And they go buy it. Okay, so you can see here the graph is like everything's up. Everything's up for it. Okay, Fallout 4 is the biggest beneficiary, spiking at to more than 83,000 concurrent players over the weekend compared to the height of 24,000 the weekend before, a few days ahead of Amazon's Fallout launch. Now, Fallout 76 arguably set an even more impressive mark by surpassing 39,000 concurrent players on a weekend following the TV series. Now, a all new, uh, all-time high on Steam for four-year-old game, Fallout 3. My favorite Bethesda's Fallout, the article, uh, the, the writer says. And make no apologies for it. Also saw a huge bounce going roughly 1,000 concurrent players on April 7th to 6,700 a week later. Now, some of the Fallout 76 surge is no doubt helped by the free-to-play event. This has started last week and ruin, uh, runs until April 18th. But I wouldn't credit that for all of its had free weeks in past and never put up numbers like this. Now, it does, however make this a very good time to give Fallout 76 a shot. He says the raw numbers aren't quite so big, but even the original original games have gone way up. Uh, Fallout broke 2,300 concurrent players immediately following the Amazon series up from a few 300 in the week before, while Fallout 2 surpassed 1,000 compared to the previous weekend of a high of 350. Industry analyst Matt Piscis Piscatella shared some uh, uh, Fallout user numbers on Twitter, nicely illustrated, and the uptick. He says the U.S., ranks that Fallout games on Steam April 14th compared to April 7th. April 14th ranked title fall, uh, 5, Fallout uh, 4, 63rd, Fallout 76, 54, and Fallout New Vegas, 83rd. Okay. There's also a whole lot of Fallout amongst the top selling in Steam right now. Fallout 76 is in the third spot. Fallout 4 is in the fourth uh, Fallout game for the year edition. Holds up the 10th place, and New Vegas is one of the best uh, play, or one of place of the top 10 Fallout 3 and Fallout franchise bundled up to make the top 20, okay? So you can see on the Steam charts right now, the top top 100 games right now. Obviously, it is free. Some of them are on super sale, okay? You got Fallout 76, you got Fallout 4, you got Fallout, 
year edition. You got Fallout New Vegas. You got Fallout Franchise Bundle, right? You got lots of Fallout. Fallout 3 down here, right? And this is what this does. People that play games, all of a sudden there's a TV show. More people are going to watch the TV show. If a TV show comes out and people watch that, they go, oh, I like the TV show. I think I'm going to go play the video game. Why other companies don't do this is idiotic to me. Like right now, Transformers 1 is a new animated movie coming out this summer. You would hope that Transformers Reactivate would come out this year to capitalize on the benefit of the new movie coming out. But I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So this is not unprecedented. In 2022, CD Projekt Red said that the success of Cyberpunk Edge Runners animated on Netflix drove Cyberpunk 2077 sales uh, to pop and helped deliver the company's best financial third quarter in the entry history. Even so, the interest to see the boost having such impact uh, across the whole of the Fallout series. No doubt nostalgia is driving up a lot of the seasoned Fallout vets back in the glory of the old days, but suddenly grabbing top spot of the, of the Steam's best-selling chart points out a lot of newcomers join the party as well. Okay. It says, Another good reason for jumping back into Fallout 4 is now that the very near future is upcoming next-gen update. Why would they do the update like this? We just talked about a conversation yesterday about even, even the modders that made Fallout London were trying to release during the show because they know it was drive sales up for them or more people would play their mod. Well, Bethesda was like, we're, we're going to do the update for Fallout 4 during this time frame, right? So April 25th, that comes out. This brings the game to a current gen console with the latest bells and whistles. And we'll also upgrade the PC version with this also support the widescreen, ultra widescreen display and new content and various fixes and gameplay tweaks. Adjacent to that is also a big, very big Fallout London mod on its way, but it's set to drop on April 23rd, which is no more. It's been delayed indefinitely until after Fallout 4's next-gen updates to ensure it doesn't break their mod. And if you want to dig a little deeper, the Fallout Vault, we can help to learn more about the game that sparked the beef over whether Bethesda is retconning Fallout's canon. It's not. And check out the guides of having the best Fallout New Vegas experience today. Okay. So, look... This makes 1,000% sense to do, and it doesn't make any sense for a company that has an IP like Star Wars, uh, like Lord of the Rings, like a WB, anything. Anything that is a well-known IP that sells millions of comic books, millions of people watch the shows or watch the movies, and there's, right? To not make a game and a, mo and a show at the same time is just silly, right? Say what you want about Fallout 76, that when it came out broke, buggy, and unfinished, just like Cyberpunk. Okay, but that game is still around. Five years after the bomb that it was, okay, of, of Fallout, it's still here. It's still survived. It's still playing. Millions of people play it, but the concurrent, when people look at it, they say, well, no, it's only 32,000 or whatever. There's still tons and tons and tons of people playing this game, and because you don't play a game doesn't mean a game is dead, right? Look at games in the past that have come back from the brink of death. The one most famous game of all, no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was dead in the water. People stopped playing it, and then all of a sudden, they just kept their gr nose to the grindstone and shot that back up. And there is no TV show. There is nothing for that. They just came back from sure will of trying to make this game a really good game, where the rest of these have the benefit and the luxury of being a well-known IP, and they have a television show, a movie, to bring them back from the brink of death. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe. And if you like what I do here, please make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> Let's see here. Sarge says, let us face the industry. Uh, let's... Let's face it, bro. Industry put themselves in a corner. Promises of high speed for money worked until they realized that they can't get the high speed to everyone uh, for that price. So they hope you don't. Uh, Krebsy says, what releasing a TV show and a movie increased the game sales of a brand or franchise? What? What do they think the players' numbers would go down? <laughs> I don't think they think it would go down. But I think, it, I think people are surprised that it, it, it kicks over what the... The game came out and didn't even hit these numbers. And now because of the TV show and years later, now obviously it's two and two together, right? The TV show brings people back and the game's in a much better state than it was when it launched in 2018. You know?
Fall 76 is free till the 19th. Other Fallout games. Yeah, but it's okay that it's free. Okay? Because once you enjoy the game and you're playing the game, they want you to make a microtransaction. The game's five years old. They can give it away for free. Right? <clears throat> YouTube on smartphone only have data server quality automatic. You have to kind of advantage to select your resolution. Halo had a TV show? It did. It did. Yeah, I know. I bought Fallout 4 VR because of the show. Uh, L says, Krebsy says, I would have released a show, then eight weeks later, the final episode airs, becoming uh, Game Drops. This is a, this is a stupid thing. That I think there, we, have an, we have an article that we're going to talk about for Fallout as well. Okay? Um, on top of this, it's a... It's talking about the fallout is pretty great and they should have been better weekly. Okay, this comes from, I can't, I read the article a little bit and I was like, wait a minute, IGN has an actual good take here. Okay. A broke clock is right twice a day. You know what I mean? Does anyone know if Fallout 4 upgrade will be free? Um, I think it's free if you have it. I think it's free for everybody, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, if you don't own the game yet, you would have to purchase the game and then it would have it in there. But if you have the game, it's already free. I bought Cyberpunk because of the five-hour demo. Quick, everyone, start recording Fallout 4 vids. We can compare it after 25 or the 25th to see if that... Oh, people are already doing that, Sarge. People are already doing that. Eclipse says, I doubt it's going to look any different. It's probably just going to have 60 frames because of Fallout 4 on PC doesn't look that good unless you got the mods. Uh, I want an Anthem TV series to help the <laughs> resurrection. <laughs> uh, that would have made, I'll be honest though, PL, if they made an animated show about Anthem, I think it would do pretty well. I think it would have done pretty well. I feel like back in the day, I could have watched 720p on Cellular with no issues. Now it's buffing mess. Now I watch streams at four, uh, 144p, Jesus. 30. Why didn't Bethesda go the Skyrim route and charge for the Fallout 4 upgrade? Um, probably because I would assume that they're just trying to hype up cross promotion with with the TV series. You know what I mean? You know what I mean by that? Like, because they can get people in, and because Fallout 4, there's creation mods and stuff like that they can get people in and then people are like oh this is a lot of fun uh and they, they can they can buy something and even if they give it away for free they can get people to come in to, if you don't own the game the show's out and you're like oh man i want to play fallout and then you buy fallout 4 for the first time mr luke says i got 76 day one was rough uh, now it's a lot less rough. Add still sticks. I I played it last night, and we're probably going to play it again tonight. I really do like Fallout 76, only because... What the funny part is, I don't even play with anybody, okay? But the fact that I can run around the world and then see someone else and, like, help them and, like, be in a world in that in that realm together with somebody is what sells me with that game. Because they want you inside 76, not Fallout 4. They don't want you to dive uh, dive that... No, they do. Because they can sell you stuff in Fallout 4 as well, Sarge. Dave says, I thought your grammar is pretty good. Also, YouTubers uh, streaming is fucked up. There's clearly something wrong with YouTube servers. Thought my grammar was pretty good. Oh, for the guy's uh, comment. Is that what you're talking about, Dave? Or David? Always join a party. You get more XP. And you don't have to have a party with them. You just get more XP by being in the party. Right. It, it promotes being with somebody, but you don't have to actually hang out with them. I'm really enjoying Fallout 76 right now. Even if it's for a short period of time, I'm like back in it, right? The show did exactly what it's supposed to do. 
it gets you like, I want to be in the Fallout world. I want to play a Fallout game. Boom. Put me back in there. Oh, Luke, are you playing it again? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll play with you. Right now, last night, all I did, right? I just went and, and, and tried to find uh, uh, pit boys. Not pit boys. Uh, bobbleheads. Right? I was just going around finding bobbleheads. Going to different locations looking for the bobbleheads. Right? That's all I wanted to do. Right? You you if you are if you're a Fallout content creator, which I'm not gonna be a full time Fallout content creator, that game constantly gives you something to do. Different builds, uh building your base, go on exp explorations, grind things. Like that that game is a perfect content for people that want that content. I'll be in after the gym for about seven hours. I'll probably play for like an hour or so after I get off stream. I play a little bit to do my dailies. To get my, uh, to go up the, the, the scoreboard route. It's a real live service game. Yeah. You know, it's funny. With all these live service games, I've said it in the past. I said, Fallout 76 is actually doing a really good job at being a live service game. People give it all shit, but it's probably one of the better live service games out there. There's constant events going on. There's always events. There's new DLC. There's new stuff they put in the game. Like, they're actually doing it correctly. Marvel game can be a 10 out of 10, and it wouldn't make me watch uh, the MCU until it's good. Sure, Krebsy, but you understand that you and me, we're like the minority now of what they're trying to go towards. And soon as they come out with something that a glimpse of hope, everyone will just go right back, right? It's exactly that's exactly what happens to everything in the past, right? Think about think about what what Star Wars did. Everyone was done with Star Wars after uh, the Last Jedi. Okay, the Last Jedi people abandoned ship, but then they brought Mando, right? The Mandalorian, and everyone's like, oh, this is the Star Wars, and people were coming back, and then they fucked it up again. <clears throat> the one thing I don't like about the Fallout First, Luke, is that they put a lot of things behind the Fallout First wall, paywall. Right? And I, I totally understand it because if you're an Xbox player, and I can justify it for Xbox players, you're paying a membership for Game Pass, and Game Pass is all these games, right? And if you play Fallout 76, you can play it just with that, or... You could just buy the game once, okay, or not buy it, and just pay for the Fallout first, and it's like being a, an MMO. Like you would pay for a World of Warcraft, or you pay for another MMO type of game, right? That's that's what it is, and Elder Scrolls or whatnot. And that, that, that business model is actually pretty good. Elder Scrolls does it. More storage, more stuff. You pay for it. You don't have to, but it does help you. GTA, uh, <clears throat> wow, did you hear my voice just crack like a little, like a 20-year-old? Titan says, uh, Fallout 76 is a lot like GTA Online with GTA Plus. Well, GTA Plus came in at way after. GTA Plus came after GTA Online, right? They didn't do that right away. That was like years and years later. Yeah, I'm going through puberty, finally, at, at 45. Here's my thing. Why is it so hard to create a Marvel or DC game? DC Universe Online is pretty much the best thing we've ever had multiplayer-wise. Yeah, I, I think the reason it's so hard, Water, in my opinion, is because there's so many people that don't... They don't want to... I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. They don't want to put all their eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? They don't want to make the game that's so good because then no one else would go play any other DC game or any other Marvel game. Does that make sense? They don't want to make a game so perfect 
that nobody else goes and plays any of the other games. Like, imagine, imagine if if Marvel's Heroes was still out Omega, right? And people were like loving it. But then they put out the Iron Man game, the single player game, and the, and the Black Panther game, and they do all this other stuff. Sure, there'll be people that go and play those games. But the masses, if they're loving, if, if, if that game was just so perfect, why would they ever go play another game? GTA Plus, like Fallout First, is after. I'm expecting GTA Plus in GTA 6. No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying, Titan, I know it was after. But Fallout First came one year after, one year after Fallout came out. When did GTA Plus, did GTA Plus come in after Fallout First, or was it before Fallout First? I mean, obviously GTA was out five years before, before, um, before Fallout 76 even came out. GTA Plus is a paid subscription service exclusive for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions of Grand Theft Auto. It launched on March 29th, 2022. Yeah, it's it's like real new. Real new. It's a decade almost after the game came out. I mean, Elder Scrolls has been out for, what, 11 years? Fallout 76? Fallout 76 has been out for five years? <laughs> Apparently my voice is damaged because I'm, I'm, I'm starting to squeak like a little kid. Hey, guys. Welcome to 30 and Still Gaming. I really appreciate you guys coming in and watching. Mr. Joker says, now it's so fashionable to hate uh, Ubisoft for uh, for donating, although players uh, turned a blind eye for donations in other games. I don't think it's turning a blind eye. I think more people are seeing it that maybe didn't play it before. You know what I'm saying, Joker? I'm not saying that nobody... There were people that complained about that stuff beforehand. It wasn't, it wasn't turning a blind eye. Now... Don't get me wrong. There are people that turn a blind eye because they're like, "Well, it doesn't really affect me, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it." Donating? Donating, uh... I don't know what he means by donating. Alright, so yesterday I was talking about... Yesterday I was talking about how I don't like how Fallout series did the one drop all at one time, right? Um, so IGN wrote an article... a couple days ago. I just came across it, right? And they just make some points, right? So they, they talk about how the synchronization of viewing experience, okay? The viewing experience, right? Let's start with the obvious reason. It says a, week, a weekly episode release schedule ensures that the fans or all stripes are able to enjoy a narrative at the same pace. Sure, some people sat down and binge watched Fallout straight through. The moment was released and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Right? It's a level of franchise dedication that makes the, it possible, but the, the crowded media landscape is also viewing experiences far from genuine. The binge model can also make sharing your experience with friends and family a little a little tricky. 
Yeah, because you have to you have to like balance it out. You're like, I don't know what I could say. Uh, spoilers or whatever, right? Not everyone saw it. So the people in my life who had actually uh, the audacity to have children cutting deep into the time and had previously reserved uh, for obsessing over a shared interest now move, you know, slower. The text threads also could be drumming up the shared excitement for the series. Also now um, uh, partial conversations, specifically an excitement of regulated or broad conversations. You ever have these conversations with people? You're like, hey, uh, do you watch the show? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I watch the show. And you're like, oh, cool. So what episode are you on? They're like, oh, I'm on episode two. You're like, okay, so let me, uh, I don't want to ruin anything for you. But like, right, th this is what happens now, right? Where in the past, the, the most recent show I can think of that everyone just lost their minds about was Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, way back in 2014 to 2018 to 2019, was when the season came out, every Friday was it, man. Like, everyone was ready to stop working, go home, sit down. They were having Game of Thrones parties at their house to all sit down to watch the next episode of Game of Thrones. Then Twitter was out then, right? Twitter was there. And yet Twitter, we all talked about it over the weekend. Everyone was together, right? It, it was almost like, remember TGI Friday, right? Back in the day on television, we watched like Full House, uh, Family Matters, all, all, all this stuff, right? It's those moments that I miss with these TV shows. It's almost like the world has gone into a Call of Duty match, okay? And what I mean by this, okay, Call of Duty is a team game. We all play Call of Duty. We all like playing Call of Duty. We all like watching TV. We all like watching movies, okay? But the Call of Duty lobbies are every man for themselves, right? Everybody's trying to get a better advantage over somebody else and ruin it for somebody else. That's the television landscape and movie landscape now, right? More television with this binge model, okay? Everyone watches the show and somebody can watch eight episodes. Every, someone can watch the six episodes. And then that person tries to ruin the lobby for everybody else, okay? And that's what I feel like it is nowadays, right? So it goes on and says, the, let's let the mystery mystery like breathe okay it says speaking of uh mysteries let's talk about the mystery elements of the show strip away the comedic bits of the uh, post-apocalyptic setting and the fallout and no so different from the television mysteries all right the show hinges around missing person a grand conspiracy theory planned unknown okay so before fallout was released even while the show was still in production the internet was a buzz of guessing or the hopes for what the first season might introduce and some of the trailers also came out. People were also guessing about the Brotherhood of Steel or the fate of the new California Republic and whether the off-screen extras was actually a major character from the games, right? And that's all gone because while you're watching and binge-watching these things, you just blow through the stuff. There's there's no, there's no mystery behind it, right? You're just, here here's here's what's happening. Payoffs 10 seconds later, right? There's nothing to slow. Like, what what's going to happen? Do you think back in the day, if we had this binge model, um, back when either maybe your grandparents or your parents, they watched a, a little show with JR. Who killed JR? Can you imagine if that was binge watched? Nobody would have thought about who killed JR. They would have known instantaneously. There wouldn't be that week of struggle of who killed JR, right? They would have known instantaneously who killed JR, and that would have been not a television moment, okay? All of this stuff is ruined by because of the binge model, which I don't like. Now, obviously, I watched it in two sittings because that's the model. That's the mentality. I have to because I'm, I'm an online personality. In my stream, while I sit here, someone would come in and just spew out something and ruin it for us and them. And you will get banned for that, by the way. Okay? But that's exactly how it happens. Okay? And because I'm that, I have to watch the show. I have to sit down and watch the entire thing in one sitting or two sittings. So I'm not ruined when I go online, okay? Even if I, like, really not go online. Don't go to Twitter. Don't, don't follow certain things. Don't go watch videos on YouTube. I boot up on my live stream. Someone comes in and goes, hey, 30, did you watch Fall? Did you see this? Blah, 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 blah. And just ruins it for everybody, right? So that's another thing. It says, delve deeper into the world. Weekly releases also give audience a chance to learn more about the show as it unfolds. Looks like a weekly schedule to benefit the X-Men 97, which is a perfect example. I don't know if you guys were watching the new Disney Plus X-Men 97. Fantastic animated series.
they've done a really, really, really good job of connecting it to the old one back from 30 years ago, okay, to today. And they've done a really good job. And I actually love that I have to wait each and every single week to wait for that next episode. Same with the Richer, oh, not Witcher series, Reacher series, okay? They released those week by week. And I loved it because me and my wife would sit down, watch an episode. We missed the first two episodes. So we watched one and two, okay? Which I would have done even if you didn't watch. You could have been, you know, DVR it or whatnot. You could watch the episodes. But then you watch all the stuff. Okay, and week by week, and you talk about it, you have a conversation, what's going to happen, what is this, this is interesting, and that's what I miss about this type of stuff, right? I don't know if they go, if they continue going on, yeah, they don't, they don't continue going on, but there's, there's just that, that aura around TV shows anymore, like, these companies want a hit TV show, but yet at the same time, they also cripple their own TV show, Fall to me, would have been a bigger hit. It would be a bigger buzz. After this first episode, they were all, they launched the first episode, people right now would be clamoring what's going to happen in Fallout Episode 2. And then Episode 2 would have came out, and people would have been like, oh, damn. Not only would it be better for everybody watching, it'd be better for the company, it'd be better for the marketing, it'd be better for the actual video games, it'd be better for everything. Okay, but yet these companies don't know what they're doing anymore. They're all going for that big buck. Well, Netflix is doing this and that's doing that. We have to get the, if, if we put them all at the same episode, we'll get an a influx of people to come onto our streaming service, which is not what it is. Okay, if you have a good show, make a game, sell a game, make a show, sell a show, people would go, oh, did you hear about that Fallout show? Oh no, what's it on? It's on Amazon Prime. Oh, Week by week, oh, man, it's so good. I can't wait for the next episode. They're like, oh, okay. And yeah, they could wait eight weeks if they want to, but if they want to get into that culture of watch it every single week, every Thursday, every Friday, people sit down, and then they discuss it. They go on Twitter. Oh, man, I can't wait. They go to the discords. They go to their chat rooms. They go to the Reddits, whatever. It would have been a much better experience, and I think Bethesda and Amazon dropped the ball here. Even though Fallout said, uh, Fallout is a fantastic show, okay? If you like it, if you don't like it, whatever. It's a good show, okay? It's a good show. S subjectively, if you don't like it, it's a show. They made a show, they sold a show, but they ruined it by chopping its legs out, by releasing it all at the same time. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. What do you like? Do you like watching the binge model? Do you like watching the week by week model? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And if you like what I do here, please make sure to check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. Can we get a Call of Duty streaming show? I like both models are around. Sometimes I want to binge others just to... Uh, just that so, uh, slow release. Jones, do you know why they do the, the full drop for a lot of the shows? Because they don't they don't believe in that show. Now, obviously, there's some great shows that come out, like Stranger Things. But there's a lot more shows like Echo, right, that come out. <clears throat> Say what you want about Marvel shows, but when they did, when they did uh, Mando and when they did WandaVision... There was a lot more interest in Disney Plus and those TV shows than when they dropped the whole fucking series. <clears throat> I'm not reading. I, I wasn't reading the article, Titan, for the, for the actual spoilers. I was just glancing through it. What if they did that to get everyone on board and season two is week to week? I kind of think you get a pushback now, though, Mo. I would be happy with it. I would be happy with it, but I think you've got a pushback now because once you raise the price, you can't go back down. Once you've made the model where you've released season one all at one one go, I don't know if you can go back to the week to week model with that show. Prossy says I'm on that second watch of Fallout. It's that good. Spoiler alert, it starts a hot white chick. Jason says X Men is fantastic. Yeah, I'm. I'm only four episodes. I haven't watched the, the fifth one yet. Right? Is there fifth or sixth? I think it's five episodes are out. I think the sixth one comes out this week.
I could do both. I think though, Salty, I could do both, right? There's a difference though if I want to binge watch. See, here's the thing. I'm okay with binge watching stuff if it's already been released, right? Like release it week to week. And if I choose not to watch that show and wait till the episode eight comes out and then binge watch them all, cool. You could do that. But I think they should stay week to week, right? Old TV, you couldn't do that, right? Old TV, you watched week by week. And if you missed that show, there was no way to go back and watch it. You had to either tape it, okay, or wait for a rerun, okay? But the way that series works now, if you miss the episode, you could just go back and watch it. And if I want to watch that episode, see, I hate when a, when a series comes out and they're like, oh, season three starts. I'll binge watch season one and two to catch up to season three. But I hate that moment when you wait and you're like, oh, I'm caught up now. Now I got to wait. Right? It's so good. I did that with Ozark. What if it was week to week? and sucked ass well then you stop watching that's the thing dolphin if if the show didn't hook you then you just abandon it and you move on why would you still watch something if it sucked ass so what's the difference so what's the difference if they give you all eight, eight episodes and it sucked ass you're okay giving them eight hours but if it was week to week and it sucked ass you're still going to give them the eight hours over eight weeks I feel like just people uh, like to complain. A weekly versus binge became more about the conversation than the show, in my opinion. I agree. I, I don't. I don't like the way it is. We're literally killing television, just like we're killing movies. Movies are dead because of the ADD of people. You have to have explosions and big things. People can't go to a movie anymore to have like an actual dialogue. You know what made Pulp Fiction really good? The dialogue. Right? Do you know what made Shawshank Redemption good? Because of the dialogue. Right? Lord of the Rings is good because of the dialogue. Yeah, there's action sequences in there. But everyone just wants quick explosions, quick things, and it, they've killed the movie industry because of it. Because the attention span of us is less, less than a goldfish. You mean writers? <laughs> is that what the binge you speak of? Is that what the binge you speak about? Is what the, is gone where it say Game of Thrones was the biggest on TV due to the weekly model as people are talking about uh, it episode to episode. Yeah, Game of Thrones was like Bigger than anything else out there. Ever. Ever. Like you knew. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Watching Game of Thrones. You want to come over? Right? Who's my favorite director? I don't really have a favorite director. I like a lot of people's. I like different directors for different things. I like directors, I don't even know their names, but I love the shots they do. Like, I loved, I don't even know the directors. I know they're, were well, they brothers? You ever watch The Gamer? Right? The Gamer is not a very good movie. Okay? But what they do, camera wise and directing, like the way they do a one continuous shot, and if you watch behind the scenes and how they do certain shots, is amazing. I like Tarantino's writing. I love his writing. I like Spielberg's storytelling visually. I like Scorsese, the way he does certain things. Like, I don't watch movies for people. I watch I watch different movies. I can always pull good and bad out of each thing. I like Nolan. I like what this Nolan did, Jonathan Nolan did, with, uh, with, with Fallout. There was this one shot that it got me. It, I was like, why is he doing it this way? Um, those of you that know, there's a, there's a shot of Lucy when she's out in the world. This is not really a spoiler for anything, okay? She's in the world, and she's talking to one of the people 
uh, in the world. It's one of her first people she interacts with, okay? And they have a shot over the shoulder of her looking at him at, at normal height. And then it cuts to a shot of her, but it's not over the shoulder. It's below from the guy's ass looking up at her, right? And I thought it was a very interesting shot. And I was just like, why did they choose to do that, right? And he's telling a story based on, the, if, if you know the context, of the character that she's talking to, right? Which I thought was pretty interesting. And I, and I, I always appreciate certain shots based on the story they're doing. Because the shots themselves tell a story. What was your favorite Fallout episode? I love the one with the uh, snip snip in it. I actually, I think the first one was, the very first episode, I think the first episode is probably the best episode. And then, which one was the snip snip episode? Was that five? Or the three? I'm not saying anything. I'm not, I haven't said anything, Sarge. I haven't said anything to spoiler of anything. I've described a shot. It's, I, I really like the show. I think I'm gonna do what Prossy is and I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it again. Because the first time I watched it, I was just trying to watch it. Now I, I wanna go back and kind of see things I missed. That first episode though is is a doozy. It's exact it's exactly what a first episode should be. Spoiler. It's fallout and there's radiation. All right. We're going to change change stories. The next story Do you think Netflix could do Bioshock justice? They're like hit and miss. Salty. Like, again, a lot of the stuff that they're making, I'm not a fan of, right? So One Piece, Airbender, uh, Bioshock. I, I, I played the first game, never played the rest of them, right? Like, I, I like the story, but I'm not, I don't love the story, right? So it could be hit or miss with Netflix, right? They completely destroyed Resident Evil, right? Resident Evil was a piece of shit. Creature said you thought the first episode was boring. I'm like, what, bro? The first episode was boring? Now, I, I don't know. Is Creature a fan of Fallout? I don't think he is. I don't think he's a fan of Fallout. Which... I can see what he's saying. Like, Travis's parents didn't like it. I don't know if they thought it was boring. But I, I can see a lot of people just don't like that, that, that background. You know what I mean? They just don't want the Fallout story. It's definitely not boring. One Piece is good. I knew nothing about it. Yeah, I didn't watch it, though. I didn't watch it. But like I said, they, they're like hit or miss. They, they do really good and then kind of iffy with another. Oh, no, he hates Bethesda. Oh, well, then if someone hates something, I, I can't take their opinion, right? Even if, you, even if you don't like it, but you're opened up and you're like, ah, oh, it does some good. Like, I never watch something and be like, this is garbage, right? Complete garbage. I can always pull something out of it. You need to have to play the game to enjoy the show. No. Based on what it is, you'll probably enjoy it more. And the reason I say that, Charles, is because you're not going to hold them you're not going to hold them hostage to what the lore is. Right now, there's people freaking out because of the lore of the of the game, and really they didn't ruin the lore. They're reading too into it and not in context of what they showed. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. All right, let's go with the next story. All right, so Lawbreakers, 
Guys, remember Lawbreakers? Lawbreakers, okay, is playable again. It was a game that came out, what, eight years ago, right? It came out in like 2016, 2017, something like that. I think it was 2017, okay? 2017, it's like seven years old, okay? Lawbreakers playable again for the first time in six years thanks to a fan project. Okay, gaming saw a rise in team-based hero shooters from 2016 to 2018 with games like Overwatch, Battleborn, and Lawbreakers. One of these things is not like the other, right? Battleborn and Lawbreakers both gone. As notable standouts, Lawbreakers are long gone, but unofficial fan project aims to revive it, making it playable for the first time in six years. Now, Lawbreakers developer by Gears of War lead designer Cliff Blasinski, studio boss Key Productions, was a 5v5 hero-based first-person shooter set in a futuristic anti-gravity landscape despite its promises. Lawbreakers servers were shut down a year after it launched in 2018. Okay. Uh, Cliff Basinski says, uh, somehow Lawbreakers is coming back. See below. If you're interested in seeing this weekend's public test of future tests, join uh, RELB Discord server to learn more to, get, uh, to keep up with the current news. Okay. At the time, Bosky Productions development team released a statement saying that Lawbreakers failed to find enough of an audience to generate the funds necessary to keep it sustained in the manner that we had originally planned or anticipated. In May of 2018, uh, Cliffy announced that Boss Key was effectively no more following the release of its Battle Royale game, Radical Heights. That game was another another bomb, okay? They, they, they made a game. They took so much time to make Lawbreakers, okay? And Lawbreakers bombed. And then he decided, the company, Boss Key and Cliffy, decided to switch gears and say, well, the big thing is Battle Royales. Why don't we just make a Battle Royale real fast? And, and that also died really, really quick, okay? Today... Uh, Cliff announced that the official Twitter account that Lawbreakers is on the eve of a comeback thanks to the unofficial fan project called RELB. He went on to encourage the players to join an upcoming public test by joining the RELB Discord server. According to the thread Reset Era, the RELB launched its its uh, Let's Players boot up Lawbreakers via Steam and played online multiplayer matches. Since April 13th, RELB has, has uh, hosted a couple of stress tests with the working servers Okay, in a region with the uh, issues of making it a hit registration. So, even with all the issues seen during the stress tests, our primary goal was to see if the whole backed uh, could handle a large amount of players, and it's held up beautifully. Okay, uh, the Discord news channels. Massive thanks to everyone with the team who helped make this happen, and of course to the people who host servers. We're really excited about the future of the project, and we hope everyone else will see it. So, here's the thing, right? A Big company tried to make the game work, and it didn't work for them. It, it bombed. It was out for a year, but it, it it survived for a year, but it died within weeks of the game coming out. I remember them showing it at uh, the Summer Game Fest, or I think back then it was uh, um, E3, okay? And they showed it. It looked, it looked promising. I remember, I think we can go back to an episode of GXG when we talked about it, and I, I think I said it, it's not going to make it. And then just shortly after, just months afterwards, no one talked about it. It almost like Foam Stars, like right now, right? Like I'm not making fun of Foam Stars. It's just like Foam Stars was talked about and then it wasn't talked about. And the reason I kind of bring that up is because it's a multiplayer game as well, right? But all of a sudden now a fan made site, fan made, uh, bring, bring it to the back from the brink of death. Okay, I looked it up on Steam Lawbreakers. Okay, now last recorded update, all-time peak from seven years ago. Now, a lot of you guys like to use Steam as the number to say it all, okay? All-time peak seven years ago was 7,579 players. Not, not very good. Not, not very good, okay? From the, from the all-time all -time peak, okay? So I don't know if this comes out and people are like, bro, this is the No Man's Sky for Lawbreakers moment. Lawbreakers is going to come out, okay, and it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. I I don't see that happening. Now I could be wrong because right now we're in a state in gaming where, because it's not a big company, because it's a fan made, more of a you know just fans that made this fan project that made this, that it could get a Pal World moment. It could get a Hell Divers moment, and because it's out now and the way the the world is working right now, timing is everything, right? All other games, AAA games are struggling in this bigger, broader uh, picture of gaming. 
when I say struggling, a lot of people are going to, in the comment section down below, like, I don't know what you're talking about, struggling. Like, you look at Suicide Squad, AAA game, Skull and Bones, quadruple-A game, right? You're looking at Star Wars Outlaws getting shit on because of the pricing stuff, not the actual game itself. Maybe, just maybe, Lawbreakers comes out because it's fan and not an actual big company behind it, and maybe it gets that battle bit, a remaster moment, right? Maybe it gets that, not that Pal World, not that Hell Divers moment, but maybe it gets that battle bit remaster moment where maybe they maybe they break the record of seven thousand. Maybe it goes up to like twenty thousand, thirty thousand, and they do really well. But is the game itself will it make it in this world with Apex Legends, with a Fortnite, with the Call of Duties, with the Battlefields? Yes, this is a arena shooter type of thing. But is it going to last with all the rest with the extraction shooters out there? I don't know. I think hell. I think hell. Uh, Hellbreakers. I think Lawbreakers comes out and it fails yet again, or maybe it finds a little niche in the market to survive. And because they're not a big studio and they're just a small team of people, maybe it does survive. Because you don't have to make millions and millions. You just got to find that core audience. My channel's perfect. Perfect uh, example, right? I'm not a big streamer. But I have a loyal fan base that comes and watches me every morning, and my channel survives because of it. So maybe they don't need everybody to come and make it like the like the uh, Hell Divers or the Power Worlds, and maybe they can survive. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments section down below. What do you think of Lawbreakers? Everyone was hyped about it back then, but it went away like the wind because of all the other Battle Royales and all the other games that were coming out. Is this the right time for Lawbreakers to come out? Let me know in the comments section down below. Let me know if you're going to play it or not. Let me know if you're going to support it or not. Uh, and if you like what I do here, please make sure you share, like, subscribe. And if uh, you like the channel, make sure you check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. So what do you guys think? Lawbreakers, is it it? Right? Lawbreakers. Here, this is what Lawbreakers look like. This is the gameplay. This is the gameplay from years ago. Okay, real fast pace. It's fast moving. Reminded me of Quake back in the day. Jason says, Yawn Breakers. Is it free? It's good. I don't know if it's free. I don't know if it's free. It... It might be free. The graphics kind of remind me of Overwatch, don't they? L says, 30, I'm your most loyal viewer. Mm, sorry. I think that would be my mom. <laughs> Pawnbrokers. Yeah, a little bit of Titanfall. Is this coming back to console? I don't know if it's coming to console. I think it's just on PC right now. Yeah, it just doesn't do anything for me. And, and look, I'm not saying because I'm not interested, the game's going to suck. Right? If I was much younger, and I, I used to love playing Quake and stuff back in the day, man. Okay? I enjoyed Overwatch when I played it in 2016 to 2018. I played for about two years off and on. I just can't get into this stuff. One, because of the PvP. Two, I just, I don't know. These all look just the same, man. They just all look the same to me. And I know that's not, like, exactly what it is, but it just all looks the same. They're all using this the engine, the same engine. They all kind of look the same. I don't know, man. It's just... Maybe it's just me. See, now, Luke, you're talking about Marvel Rivals, and I don't know if I can get into that either. I'm going to try it just because the IP, the Marvels, right? I'm going to try it, but I don't know if I'm going to love it. It might be fun. I don't know. We'll see what we'll see what that what that game does. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try Lawbreakers. I'm definitely gonna try Marvel uh Rivals. Burnout of Shooters? I don't know if I it, it's almost like 
Titan, I don't I don't know how old you are, right? When I was a kid, I loved sports. Loved baseball, football, soccer, basketball, hockey. And as I got older, right? I mean, I was I could talk about more about sports than I can about video games. I was a I was like a Rolodex for sports, okay? Up until about 10 years ago, and I, I just stopped caring. I feel like just like your taste buds change, your 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 things change, right? And it's not me being burnt out with shooters. It's just kind of I've kind of grown past it, right? I don't like playing those games anymore, but I do like playing Battlefield, right? I like playing the Battlefield games. I'm, I'm definitely more of a PvE guy now than a PvP. And it's not about being burnt out. It's just like I think my tastes have changed. The problem right now is uh, Nexon owns the IP, still, I believe, for Marvel. You're talking about Marvel, Paul? Have you seen the new Konami baseball game graphically? Yeah, I, I saw it. You guys posted it in Discord. Looks interesting. Salty says, yeah, I've grown, uh, grown past the pixel football, FIFA game driving games, uh, your tastes change, like a fine wine. Yeah, it just changes. I'm not paying $70 for Rivals. I think I think Rivals is free. It's a free-to-play game, House. I'm pretty sure it's free-to-play because they're going to make money off microtransactions. I don't think it's a $70 game. If it's $70, I'm, de I'm definitely not playing it. I ain't, I ain't paying fucking seventy dollars for that. Now I feel bad for my brother-in-law for buying me Suicide Squad. I feel jipped for my Christmas gift. I mean, I enjoyed the the single-player game, but. question is will it crash and burn like the Ga Gundam Evolution you guys showed me that you guys showed me that a couple weeks ago we, we looked at it on stream right the Gundam one I think that looked 10 times better than what we just watched for Lawbreakers and that game bombed right and that actually has a fan base behind it oh I got I got well over 100 hours in it water I'm good I'm joking saying that I feel bad I'm, I'm good Luke says my my Twitch channel paid for my Suicide Squad game. The thing is, though, this is a fan project. I know, Paul. I said it. I said that in the actual article, and I said I think it. I think it builds up. Maybe you came in after the fact. I I think that maybe it gets a battle bit remastered moment, but not a Pal World Hell Divers moment. You know what I mean? Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter are full price, right? Um, not anymore. They came out, what, like August last year? November, whatever it is? I'm not going to check out Diablo until, like, summertime, if I do at all. I am, I am as well, Luke, right? Luke says, I'm happy with the story, uh, Suicide Squad, and I'm happy that I never played it again. Still not unlocked the Joker. Oh, really? See, I unlocked the Joker, but I'm disappointed that there's no story and stuff for it. The only way they get me back to, like, like the game is if they do more to the story. I remember you saying something previously about Diablo 4 not being good until Season 4. Yeah, I said that during 
before season one, when we first started playing the game. I did one of these moments. I did one of those moments. Uh, I think we'll see more about that house probably this summer. The fact that it didn't have a massive cutscene for the Joker and pushing the story on was the biggest fail. I don't understand it. I don't I don't understand how comic book developers, right? Developers are making games out of comic books can't tell stories. When fucking stories, they just, they just have to tell the same stories again if they want to, or you know, make them a little different. The source material is already there. They decide that they want to make their brand new Joker and have stories, but they don't want to tell stories about the characters. They said, let's make a character of the Joker, okay? But let's not tell anybody what the Joker is. Imagine that. Let's make a brand new Joker, but tell you nothing about him except for he's from a different universe and he killed his squad or did he, right? It's like you could have taken a Joker that we know and we already know the backstory of him. So you wouldn't have to tell us a backstory for the Joker. But now you gave us a brand new Joker. And we don't know anything about him. Amazing. What a, what a genius. Is this the Ryan Johnson of writing? Subvert your expectations. We're going to tell you a character. And then not tell you anything about this character. And then tell you that you don't just don't understand the story. So many corners were cut for the Joker. It's it's just baffling to me. How badass would it be? Because now 2020, hindsight's 2020, right? Joker's out. We can look at him. Because leading up to this, right? Leading up to it, you can go, oh, cool. They're introducing a new Joker. I'm excited to see what the new Joker is. But they didn't do it. They didn't do anything. But wait, maybe they'll do it in season one, part two, right? Maybe we'll get that extra content, Okay. I've listened to all the dialogue in the in the tapes and stuff like that, okay? There's, like, no story, okay? Imagine if they did this. Now, obviously, Kevin Conroy is, 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 no, um, is gone. Mark Hamill is no longer doing the voice. But can you imagine if it was the Joker, Mark Hamill's Joker? We know everything about that Joker. We know he's a deranged lunatic, okay? You could have brought him in, right? Didn't have to tell any story, but like, oh man, this guy's crazy. This is this is good. We would have made our own story up because we already know the backstory of that Joker. Nope. Nope. We have to shit on that character, right? He's dead. We're not gonna bring him back. And then we're gonna bring a brand new Joker in who's a little bit, you know, iffy. Okay. Right? But we're not gonna tell you he is. But we're gonna allude to it that he is. Did you get the free perk for 76 in Game Pass? Yeah, the backpack, the camping gear, and stuff like that. Luke, that's crazy that you're not even waiting. Because remember, when the game first came out, we both talked about it. You're like, man, I'm, I really like it. I'm like, yeah, I really like it. You're like, yeah, I can see myself playing this for the foreseeable future. And then the, the house of cards went and just crumbled. It's amazing what a month does. Right? It's amazing what a month does. Crowded House says, do you think Rocksteady knows that they're making a horrible decision before they make it? I Look, I, I think um, when you're up on the ladder, when you're up on the ladder doing maintenance, you're not thinking about, am I going to fall off this ladder? You just think you're going to do the, th the job, right? Not until after... You realized after you fell off the ladder, like, how did I fall off the ladder? Oh, maybe it's because I didn't put the ladder on a, on a on even ground and no one was holding the ladder. And I was, you know, holding one arm as I was doing the thing on the roof. You know what I mean? Like, they, they didn't think that far through. Is Division 2 worth even going back to? I remember you talked about it, but wasn't sure if you had fun or if it wasn't worth it. 
Here's the thing for me, Jay Breezy. I like Division Two. I think Division Two is a fantastic game. If you if you have you played it, or are you in the middle of playing it, or are you thinking about getting it? I need to know that before I answer your question. Like, what have you played for Division Two? Already in Endgame. So you played, you played, uh, you played New York. You played all that stuff. Stop after Warlords. Okay. So the the DLC and stuff. If you if you want the little bits and pieces of the story, if you want that, then I would say go back and play it. But if you want to go back and like you think there's gonna be like more game modes and more stuff. No, it's it's not that good. But if you're just going back for that small little fix of this is why I go back once a month, every three weeks or whatever, I go back, do that story mission, and then move on. If you're going back to play like hardcore, go in, trying to grind for stuff, I don't think it's worth going back. I don't. But if we're going back just to dabble in it, I do think it's worth it. You already own it. Right? Just go back. They, they have new gear. They have new stuff to go in. You can do a different build. It's still there. I, would, I wouldn't, I would like, invest your time into, like, grinding that game unless they come out with some other DLC or something. These games should be making short movies, uploading them to YouTube and work before it released a new season. Overwatch used to have it with all the new heroes. Uh, I, I I think that should do that on top of making actual story in the game, Paul. More marketing and stuff like that, for sure. But I don't know if they would rely on to go outside the game, to go watch a video, to then go in the game, to not know. You, you know what I mean? That's just as bad as like Grimoire cards for Destiny back in Destiny 1. When they switch the seasons, to, uh, what's going on, Brad? Recurring people are acting like it was a great new innovation, innovation, but it's also literally a season of hostage rescue. Was all, yeah, it's not very good. Like I, I, I like the story at the very end, but doing the same thing over and over to just get to that story, instead of killing four guys, you're not gonna kill four different guys, and we're gonna have your rescuing people. But then when you rescue people, you're, we're not showing you actually rescue them. They just tell you they're rescued. And to change it up, we're no longer killing guys, main guys, but you're going to kill guys in locations in New York. You're like, oh, this is different. I Look, I me and Sarge talk about it all the time. Division 2 is a fantastic game. The level design is phenomenal. The actual game loop is fantastic. If you're a person playing Division Two for the very first time, there's so much to do. If you're a person in end game and division, there's nothing to do. I mean, you could do it, but why? All right, the the last story I want to talk about today. Yeah, they, they, as soon as they got done with Star Wars Outlaws, they moved over to uh, Division 3. Yeah, Brain, they got, they got to do more. They got to do more. Nothing to do with Endgame. What I'm saying, Jones, is... If you're a person that's playing the game, like, okay, the game comes out. You play through Desti uh, D uh, Division 2, right? You get to end game because then you're you're going for builds and different things. So when they come out with new content, that you could destroy that content, right? Like, you're going through if it's a, a raid, uh, new story missions, harder bosses. But now, it's not that, right? They're just keeping it on life support. And the end game in Division 2 is going for the exact same stuff you were going for. But for what? What do you... Everything in the game right now is already in the game. There's nothing new coming into the game to 
achieve greatness to to get a build to go do it. Now it's more of you play the game. I I did this uh this uh the summit in one hour and ten minutes. Well, let's see if I can do it faster, right? I cleared this mission in uh, in nine minutes. Let me see if I can do it faster. That's it. Exactly. End game is just mid max build you enjoy. That's it, right? I've done this mission a thousand times. Let's see if I can do it a thousand and one and do it faster than I did the a thousand time. That's it. Cool. If 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 you're getting into the game for the very first time, there's so much stuff to do. But if you're in the game and you've been playing for five years, there's not much to do. It's the same stuff you've already been doing. Right? Sure. I still have to level up my, my end game uh, watch. Right? I still have another levels to go. Okay. But why? What am I doing? Great, I, I get to do 0.001% more damage if I if I if I level up a, a level. Right? I know that they're not supporting the game anymore. So what are they gonna bring in? This is me not giving shit to it. I still enjoy going to play the game and hang out with Sarge and shoot stuff. I think that the game itself is a fantastic game. There's just not more to it. A live service game has no more live service. It's on, it's on life support. Because they're trying to get you to the other two division games they're creating on mobile and what? Heartlands and uh, Rogue? What, what What's the other one called? There's Heartland and is it is it Rogue? For new players, Division 2 is a great purchase. A lot of the story content for re returning players, they need to innovate and break the new life into what we already know. Exactly. It's a fantastic game. If you could pick that game up and play it, by all means, pick it up. It's a fantastic game. It's just stale for people that have been in the game. And we're not talking like six months after the game came out. We're talking five years after, right? It's, it's had its life cycle. Okay. So let's, let's talk about this real fast, right? Speaking of uh, Ubisoft, okay? Heartland's DLC for Division 2. No, Heartland's not Division. It's a separate separate game. It's a separate game. All right, so Ubisoft responds as Star Wars Outlaws comes under fire for the Jabba the Hutt Season Pass exclusive. Yesterday, we talked about the, the Season Pass and how they locked behind uh, Jabba Mission. Like, Jabba's still in the game, but his one mission that you can't do is locked behind the Season Pass, which is locked behind the $110 version of the game. So Star Wars Outlaws prompted a collective sigh last week when they revealed that the single player open world uh, adventure will have a season pass addition to the nowadays common play the game early incentive attached to pricey special edition. For an extra $40 of gold edition, a total of $110, the season pass gets you post launch expansions, some cosmetics, and an exclusive day one mission called Jabba's Gambit. Now, the later bonus triggered widespread fuming is also possible uh, to jump into conclusion of the base, some other uh, ambiguous wording. The mission was also one of the Jabba the Hutt missions in the game. Look at the headlines after all. But it's definitely not the only Jabba mission in the game. According to Ubisoft, and this is this is talking about reading the room, right? Ubisoft, this is like a, a guy in a suit that comes down and goes, I'll answer this. Uh, to clarify, uh, Jabba the Hutt, the Hutt cartel, are one of the main syndicates in Star Wars. Right, hold on a second. Got to... I gotta, I gotta put, I gotta get into character. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get into character. We'll, we'll read that again. We gotta get into character for. Uh, to clarify, uh, Job of the Hut and the Cut Cartel are one of the main syndicates in the Star Wars Outlaws, and will be part of the experience for everyone who purchases the game. Okay, regardless of the edition. A Ubisoft rep told us that uh, Jabba the Hutt's Gambit mission is an optional additional mission with the Hutt cartel along with Kay and Nix's journey across the Outer Rim. Uh, this mission will be available to uh, those who purchase the Season Pass for edition of the game, which includes the Season Pass. Right? So... It still sucks that the uh, gate launches the content behind Season Pass, right? They they didn't hear. They're like, 
no, no, we hear you. Everyone's like, this is bullshit that this is stuck behind the actual paywall. They're like, well, it's actually not stuck behind the paywall. It's actually an optional uh, thing. It's available for all those who purchase the $110, right? It, it's, it's all, it's there for everybody. You're like, um, that's not what we're complaining about. We're complaining that you're charging $110 and linking that one mission behind a paywall. Why don't you just take that one mission and put it into the actual fucking game? That's what people are complaining about. Like, they, they don't actually... They're like, oh no, we got this. Oh, everyone's upset. They think that this is stuck behind and we're, we're taking it away from the game. Yes, that's exactly what we're thinking. No, no, that's not what we're doing. To clarify, the mission, Jabba's still in the game. But this mission is behind. Yeah, we uh, we could read. We heard that. Yeah, we we know that one mission is behind a paywall, and we're pissed about it because why are you taking one mission and putting it behind a thirty dollar paywall? That is what people are upset about. But Ubisoft is like, I just don't get it. Why is everyone upset? Job is in the game. Do they not know Job is in the game? This is like one of those moments. What you don't have phones? This is exactly what it feels like. This is exactly what it feels like, right? They're like, yeah, we're bringing Diablo 4 to, to, to the phone. Everyone's like, we don't want a fucking Diablo game on the phone. They're like, what, you don't have phones? We're like, no, we don't want a Diablo game on the fucking phone. We're like, hey, can you give us a full game? No, no, we're giving you Jabba in the game, but we're putting one of his missions behind a paywall. And they're like, yeah, we, we heard it the first time. That's why we're pissed. I don't think you guys understand. Yeah, no, we understand. That you guys are milking us for one mission behind a $30 pay... I'm sorry, $40 paywall. Idiots. They're idiots. And this is, this is the desync between corporate and actual people. Okay? Corporate's like, I don't understand why they're mad. They understand that Jabba's in the game, right? <laughs> it's like... Fucking idiots. They're fucking idiots. Okay? This is not one of those moments of... What do you think? This is me telling you they're fucking idiots. Okay? I don't understand. They don't understand why the people are upset. And to clarify, they're telling us, no, Job of the Hut is in the game. Yet, yeah, no, we understand that. An extra mission for $30. It's 40 bucks. It's $40 water. But it's with the early access and the season pass. But that's not enough. That's not enough. Right? Yeah, I'm not buying the game or getting the $18 sub. This is everything I hate about modern gaming. You know, earlier, I think, was it L? In the very beginning of the stream, you asked me, and I never I never answered it, but it just re reminded me an hour and 52 minutes later. Um, you said, am I still going to get the $18 version? And yesterday I said, I don't know if I'm getting the $18 version. As of right now, I'm kind of up in limbo, okay? Because as a content creator, a part of me wants to get the game so I can play it to show if it's a good game, Right? Because I don't think the game is going to be a bad game. My problem with this is Ubisoft's pricing structure and what they're trying to do. And if I buy the game or pay the $18, because they made the problem. They made the game super expensive to push you over to the $18. Okay? This is a fact because the season pass and stuff is included in the $18 premium of Ubisoft. Okay? So, I have a problem fundamentally what Ubisoft is doing, not particularly with the game itself. Right? What else comes with that $30? It's not $30. It's $40. It's $40. $30 will get you $100. This is $110. It's $40. Okay? You get the season pass. You get a bunch of different um, skins. And you get the Jabba mission on day one. Right? So you're paying for three days early access. You're paying for the season pass. You're getting the extra uh, cosmetic skins. And you're also getting the one Jabba, the hut mission, that you only get if you get the... Um, the season pass $110 version. I guarantee you that mission's in the game six to a year after. That game, that, that Job of the Hut mission will be in the game six months to a year after for no extra charge. 
So essentially on disc DLC, yes. And this is why I made a couple days ago, last week, when they when they first announced it, I said this reminds me of Destiny, what they did with the Dark Below and House of Wolves. And then they'll sit there and wonder why no one's buying or in this game. That's exactly right. They'll be like, I don't understand. Why are people so upset? Job of the Hutt's in the game. Job of the Hutt's in the game. It's like, we're not worried about Job of the Hutt being in the game, morons. We're upset that you're taking a mission, a mission, and putting it behind a $40 paywall. Oh, no, no, you're not paying for the, you're not paying for the one mission. You're paying for the season pass that we don't know when you're going to give it to you. And some cosmetics. On PC, you'll just be able to unlock it day one with a mod. Probably, Paul. You're not wrong there. <laughs> Game will still probably sell like hotcakes. Perhaps. And you know what, Jones? I'm okay with that. If a game sells like that, I mean, hell, 5 million people bought Cyberpunk 2077 on the shittier consoles after they told them it was broke. I mean, if you can, if you can sell it to dummies, why not? Right? People are going to justify themselves. They're like, well, I'm not giving them $70. I'm not giving them $110. We're just paying the $18. Right? Which just makes you think, how can they charge $110 on one side and $18 on the other. What does that game really cost them? If they're willing to put that game on the service and give it to you for $18, meaning are you buying that game and beating that game? That's a, that's a huge chunk of change difference. I want to play it, but if we support this, it'll keep happening. The problem is they don't need all of us to not buy it. Even if they get the 20% to buy it, Water, that's all they need. I think the game is going to be a good game. I do. I do. I think the game is going to be a good game. My problem, just like Cyberpunk, my problem is not with Cyberpunk 2077. It was with CD Projekt Red. My problem is not with Star Wars Outlaws. It's with Ubisoft. I mean, we already know one that's pre-ordered. It already and and there's only 41 people in here. It's true. We know one person that actually got it, right? So let's just take that that fraction, right? So one out of every 40 people <laughs> is buying the game. Okay. One out of every 40 people is buying the game on the just just on this quick quick math, right? There's there's a potential of what? 350 million. <laughs> By that math, right? 350 million people between PC, PlayStation, Xbox, wh whatever. Let's just say 350 million people, okay, that are in the gaming space. Now, obviously, not everyone's buying the game. One out of every 40 people, that's 8.7 million people that potentially could buy the game. At times 110. I'm sorry, what did I say? 800? Oh, shoot. 350 million divided by 40 is 8.7 times 110. That's just under a billion dollars. That's $962.5 million. That's if people, if that's if those people ordered. Now, obviously, there's not going to be 8 million people ordering the game before it launches. It might be 2 million. It might be like Starfield. 2 million people buy the game. Okay. 
2 million times 110, it's still $220 million, right? It's still 220 million people, right? Now, does that cover the cost of the game? Does it cover the cost of the game? Who knows? I wonder how much Disney takes. Uh, they probably pay, take about 20%. 20-25%, I would say. The Disney tax. Do you think this is uh, tied to the same thing? Uh, same thinking as the shows. They release the show all at once, and if they think it will fail, feels like Ubi has no confidence. They want it all before release. Um, Sure. Sure, the difference between, like, the example I'll give is Suicide Squad and Outlaws. Let's compare Suicide Squad with Outlaws. The difference between Suicide Squad is that they're charging the $70 to $100, right? Because it was uh, three days early access or five days early access, right? And all the content is free, right? All the content is free, but they're charging massive microtransactions in there. Where this one's a single player game and they're charging $70 and $110, right? So not only are they charging $10 more than the game that's not charging anything for the for the DLC for the season pass, okay? So so on top of that, okay, they have to they have to where was I going with this? I just lost my Oh. So they they're they're charging free for all the content. But yet Ubisoft wants you to give the $110 up front and we have no idea where the season pass is coming. When it's coming, if it's done, right? It's an obligation past that point. And it's Redfall. Redfall people paid $120 for the Redfall. Where is it? It's been one year and those people still haven't really, haven't gotten their, their content that they paid up front for. Right? So maybe, maybe they think the game is not that good. I think it should be against the law. I mean this. It should be against the law to charge something that's not out yet. We have no idea when that DLC is coming out. There's no hard date. Nothing. It's just season pass, pay 100 bucks, $110 up front, and we'll let you know about it. They don't tell you when it's coming out. Look at Starfield. Water just said it. I made that mistake with Starfield, right? Starfield gave you the shattered space, whatever the hell it is. Where is it? We have heard nothing. But people paid their money. Even if on Game Pass, people paid $30 to pay early access and get the season pass, and other people paid for the full price with the, with the pre-order stuff. They haven't got it yet. Right? Regardless if it's good or not, we don't know when the actual release date is. It, at least Destiny told you when when the when the how, uh, Dark Below was coming out and the House of Wolves were coming out. At least they told you Dark Below, December 3rd. Right? House of Wolves. It was like May or March, whatever it was. You knew when it was coming out. Not these companies. They're like, yeah, give us $110 up front uh, and we have a season pass coming. We just don't know when it's coming out. I have a feeling the uh, the final shape when Destiny is the biggest DLC. It has to be. I mean, I don't know if it has to be the biggest DLC. It just has to be a, a fun product. It doesn't have to be the biggest. What do they care? It's over. <laughs> they already gave you your value. They gave you 10 years.
I don't think you should be able to sell DLC if there's no actual date on it. Right? You 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 know where I stand too. Don't tell us a roadmap about something if you're not going to hit that mark either, right? If you have DLC coming out but you don't know the actual date for it, shut up. Don't tell us there's DLC. Don't tell us anything about it. Don't sell us on that game. And this is what they're trying to hype you up about, right? Ubisoft knows that you're going to buy this game because one, Star Wars. Two, what about if we tell them there's a season pass going on? So there's going to be more content. So we're giving more value. Okay, not enough value for you. Wait, there's more. We get you three days early access and we're going to give you three days early access so you can play it three days before your friend, right? So it can ruin it for you, right? This is that binge model type of thing. Okay, we're going to give it to you three days early access, but wait, there's more. We're going to give you another mission that's only exclusive for this thing. FOMO, if you don't buy this, if you don't buy this season pass three day early access, you will not get this mission at all. Well, how big is that mission? Is that mission even plausible? Like, like, is it is it that important? Because if I don't play it, is there going to be this big gapping, uh, gaping hole of the story if I don't do that mission? Do I get the coolest gear? I don't even know what happens. Do you get a cool piece of gear when you do that mission and complete it? What do you get? Is there a bonus? Is there an advantage? What is it? We know nothing. You know nothing about the mission. You know nothing about the actual uh, DLC for the season pass that's coming out but yet they want you to give their hard-earned money up front. Guys, guys, if you give me $100 right now, I promise you I will stream every single day from now to the end of the year. Sounds a little sketchy, doesn't it? Sounds a little sketchy, doesn't it? It's okay for them to do it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's a um, weekend came up. I can't, I can't do it. Uh, something came up. It's okay, though, because you still got your value. There's still uh, 364 days left. There's still 363 days left. Uh, you know, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to take two weeks off from that. So there's, there's still uh, 340. You know, it's like... Maybe it's because of the DLC, so it's so huge, it's fantastic. Maybe. If it's so fantastic, then tell us what it is. Tell us when it's coming out. Tell us if it's three months out, six months out. What is it? Marcus says, I can understand, but the reason I want the practice banned is so that it actually stops. If the brain deads will keep on going and making no difference, I don't want the option to be there at all. Right. Because there'll always be people, always be people that will do it. Because they don't know better or they don't care. Because if the fire's outside your house, you're not affected by the fire until it gets to your house. Right? So they're just like, eh, it's fine. I don't care. The Redfall team will be have to be melting down right now. Well, I don't think there's a lot of people that, that bought it. I'll be honest, House. But when it comes out, all those 10 people that bought it, they'll finally get their obligation pass. <clears throat> Ubisoft will announce more info on the DLC closer to launch during the August, I would imagine. Then why ask for the money up front now? Why even tell us about the DLC now? Why can't you just make a game, sell a game, and just sell the game based off what it is? You're hiding me on something that I have no idea about. I have no idea what's in the season pass. None. This is all they tell you, right? This is all they tell you on the on the on the season pass.
two DLCs that will release after launch. Keep exploring the world for Star Wars Outlaws with all new stories, quests, and areas to discover. Great. So basically what you're already doing in the game, but when? When does it come out? Is it... Is it one story? Two? The DLC? What? What is the... What? Because... Because Jabba's Gambit is an exclusive mission, right? So with all new stories, quests, and areas to discover, what is it? Is it a whole new planet? What is it? You want me to give you my money up front, but I know nothing of the actual thing. Y'all should open up a class action lawsuit against Redfall. All five people? I don't think that'll work. You think they will throw in the towel just to refund people's money and paid for the Redfall DLC? No. Because it's on Game Pass. No. No, that's just a drop in the bucket. They'll just they'll just they'll just keep doing it. Krebsy says, I wish there's a bank that I can take a loan for ten million and not ask when I'll pay them back. Right? Yeah, like a loan. Uh ten million dollars. Um when are you going to pay us back? I don't know. Sometime between now and when I'm dead. It'll come. Just, just, just want to keep you on your toes. Don't want to, don't want to, don't want to spoil it for you. I think that's all the stories we had, right? Yeah, that's the that's all the stories. We did the Sony wants the 60 frames per second. We got the Fall 76. We got the Lawbreakers. We got the Ubisoft story. You just have to be super rich already. Uh, then then claim bankruptcy. That's true. That is a thing. Let's let's go to Twitter. I'll stay at, let's see what we got. Do we got anything else on the good old Twitter space? Oh, they got the new Adat Walkers in uh, in Hell Divers. They got they got the new uh, they got the new Walkers. I mean, they they they've been seen in the game before, but now. There you go. And then grounded because it's coming to uh features and quality of life update. Because it's coming to PlayStation. Hello grounded backyard adventurers. Welcome to the latest blog for update 1.4 rightfully titled Fully yoked. This Fully yoked. Is not just big, it's bulging with a ton of new content, features, and quality of life updates. We've packed it with so much new stuff that even an ant would struggle to carry it. So, grab your gear and let's jump right into seeing some of what this 1.4 update brings. Let's talk about the newest neighbors to move into the backyard. The ant queens. Hold on but one second. You meet them, Sorry, I'll make it a little louder. You that they're not your typical fightable bosses. Interacting with an ant queen isn't about combat but choices and consequences. Choose to be a friend and the colony becomes an ally. Choose betrayal and brace yourself for some serious antitude. These choices aren't just one-off decisions. They resonate throughout the colony, affecting how these tiny warriors interact with you. Every encounter with an ant queen is critical, shaping your journey in the backyard. So think carefully, as your actions with the queens will have cascading effects that aren't immediately apparent. Plus, the ant queens aren't just about That's the cool. drama. They bring 12 new ant queen related buildings, including ant queen chases and chandeliers. And for pet lovers, get ready to aww. There's a new baby ant pet to collect and nurture based on one of the choices you make with the ant queens. That's cool. <clears throat> and remember, choices in the ant world have lasting impacts. Choose wisely and watch how your relationship with these royal insects unfold. Next up, we we'll remix your backyard. You want ants on your side. If I can have an ant army 
on my side, I'm picking that. Why wouldn't I want the ants on my side? What's the downfall of having an ant colony as your friend? What, what kind of choice is that? It's like you could either betray the ants or you could befriend them. Um, I'll take ants on my side. Introducing our version of New Game Plus mode to Grounded, where you can replay the game with an added layer of complexity and challenge with a twist. In this mode, each playthrough transforms the yard, spawning creatures in new locations, offering new rewards, makes bosses more challenging, and reveals strange anomalies and secrets. Accessing this mode isn't a walk through the backyard, it's a victory lap after defeating the Broodmother, Mantis, Wasp Queen, and winning the Javamatic fight. Then, you can leap into alternate dimensions through Wendell's latest invention, the Remixer. In these remix dimensions, creatures have a random chance to be infused with the power of raw science, making them faster and stronger, oh, and damn. giving them unique properties that make them extra challenging. But the juice is worth the squeeze, as these creatures can drop special trinkets made of raw science particles. These trinkets are game changers, as they also have unique randomized properties attached to them. Along with the new infused trinkets, you'll need to continue to get more powerful yourself. First, we've added a host of new ASL additions, including a new science set, weapons, and equipment that redefine your survival tactics. Second, we've hidden milk molars in new randomized spots in the remix yards. Keep collecting them to stay as strong as the creatures you face. Third, there are new burgle chip trinkets and ominent badge trinkets which also have randomized properties to give you more options on how to build your character. Lastly, and most importantly, to truly reach the next level, you'll need to build a new yoking station. It's your go-to spot that? in Remix Yards for leveling up your weapons past level 9. Scour these new dimensions for unique materials and prepare to wield power like Yoked Girth himself. And there's way more to discover and secrets to find in these Remix Yards. Have fun! As we come to the end of our fully yoked vlog for the 1.4 update, let's recap. Con must feed ants. A lot of food. Grounded is now more beefier than ever, with new content that transforms your backyard into endless possibilities. So much so that we couldn't even mention everything here and encourage you to check out the full patch notes. Whether you're a first time explorer or a seasoned survivor, this update is sure to add a fresh twist to your backyard adventures. Grounded is also now available digitally for Xbox One, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, Windows Store, Steam, and just recently released on the PlayStation 4 and 5, and the Nintendo Switch. Thank Dude, this is, this is so smart by Microsoft to put it on the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4 and 5. This is a fantastic game. It was a fantastic game two years ago when it was in alpha and then beta, and then when it released, it released last year, didn't it, in September or something like that? And now it's fully, or it's been a year. It's been a year, I think, uh, since it released. It's a fantastic game. And this is, this is a really good, this is a fantastic update, it seems, right? They put the new game plus. There's so much more stuff to do. Very cool. Thanks to the incredible work by our friends at... Another game, by the way, another game that you buy and there's no microtransactions in it, right? It's just continuously being upgraded. Double 11. And for the collectors among you, make sure to grab your physical edition through limited run games for Xbox One. X oh, look at that. I wonder what that is, what the price is. Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo Switch. To our amazing Grounded community, we can't thank you enough for your passion and support. Although this is Grounded's last planned content update, our journey together doesn't end here. We'll continue improving, optimizing, and squashing bugs to ensure your experience is as immersive and enjoyable as possible. Until our paths cross again in the backyard, stay safe, and as always, stay grounded. Hello. That's cool. They've done a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, let me see if I can look at the pre-order stuff. Uh, let's see. Gearbox, grounded, obsidian.net. Uh, gear shop buy now. Limited run. Okay, so limited run has a. Okay. So let let's put it this way. Okay, so grounded. Grounded has a hundred twenty four dollar version, right? One hundred twenty four dollar version. Okay, mind you, mind you, um, Ubisoft has a hundred ten dollar version for just the game digital, 
okay? This is a physical copy, okay? And you get, <clears throat> for this, you get a physical copy of the ground, fully yoked edition for Nintendo Switch or for any of the game systems. Grounded fully yoked edition, collector's edition box. Four by six frame includes 10 swappable art cards, USB cassette tape soundtrack, CD soundtrack, dice set, stickers, art book, uh, Mant miniatures, hoops, sweet bands. Okay, so you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 10 swappable art cards. So you got 17, 18, you get 19 things. Okay, 19 things in here. Can I, can I make this? Uh, yeah. You get all of these things for the same price. Well, actually, $14 more. Okay. Or $15 less if you get the Ultimate Edition for Ubisoft's Star Wars Outlaws. Okay. You get all of this for either $14 more than the Premium Edition or $14 less than the Platinum Edition. Okay, screw you, Ubisoft. Right? Obsidian, or not Obsidian, Larian Studios gives it $80, and, and Sarge showed you what he got in his box for $80. Right? For, a, for, for, for $30 more than what, what Sarge got for Boulder's Gate 3, okay, you get all digital stuff. You don't even get a hard copy of the game. And you have to wait for content. Yeah, it's a cassette. It's a cassette. It's a thumb drive. You can you can see it right here. It's a, it's a thumb drive. You get dice. Okay, you get you actually get dice, so you can play like a role playing game or whatever. So you actually get more stuff. Remember, remember the idiot yesterday, Mikey Barra, that said you should be able to tip your your developers? That's what this is. Right? If I give you money, you give me physical items. Shirt, hat, CD, dice, book, art, whatever. Okay? What game uh, could get more subscribers to Ubisoft? Plus or Game Pass? Um, I would think, I would think Game Pass over Ubisoft Plus. I don't know. Just because there's, there's multi, multiplayer games that you can play. Star Wars Outlaws is a single player game. Right? A lot of the games that are on Game Pass at least for Xbox titles. To say what you want about Redfall, multiplayer. Forza Horizon, multiplayer. Uh, uh, grounded, multiplayer. Um, you know, what else? Fallout 76, multiplayer. Right? There's there's lots of games you can play multiplayer. So you, I think you would get better value. But that's each their own subjective. Because if you like Ubisoft Assassin's Creed games, then I guess you could be... But there's a, a, lot, a lot more games over on uh, Game Pass, I would think. Krebsy says, this made me laugh. Pocket Pair CEO, a.k.a. Power World Dev, is accusing Tencent of making a Power World clone. I, I, I said that would happen, Krebsy, when it came out. I said, people will just copy the game. Right? I said that would happen. That's a cool update, though, for, for Grounded, man.
I'm trying to see if there's another story. Amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do, Jones. You know what the funny part is? This is the exact same thing, though. What's good for the goose is not good for the gander, right? So this person's like, no, we didn't We didn't copy Pokemon. We, we, we changed it. So now, what about if they just made Pal World, but instead of the characters that they have, they just tweak them a little bit, and instead of running around with guns, you're running around with swords. Is Grounded Cross Platform? I don't know that answer. Let me see. Um... Yes, Grounded does support cross-play and cross-platform between PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch systems. That, dude, that, that's a win. That's a win for gaming. That's a win for gaming. Okay? They said it on April 4th, 2024. Okay? Grounded is cross-platform across all the systems. That, I'm telling you, man, that's a fantastic game. Maybe, maybe we'll go back and play that in a week or so. I still have to complete some things. If I have a group of people to play with, I'll jump back into that and we'll, we'll go kill some, you know, broodmother or something. I I absolutely adore that game. I adored it years ago when it came out. I still adore it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Grounded was uh, digitally released on April 16th for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and uh, Nintendo Switch. Grounded will also release on 1.4. Yeah, but when was the original release? Okay, so Grounded Survival Action Adventure video game developed by Obsidian Games was published on Xbox Studios and was released for Windows and Xbox in early access in July of 2020. It was also full released on September 27, 2022. So it's been out for a year and a year and a half now. And now it's coming to Switch and X. See, here's what I don't understand. Those people that are upset about Xbox giving games over to PlayStation and Switch, like as a gamer, you should be ecstatic about this. Right? Grounded, yeah, it's not a triple A like super game that everyone wants to play. But the fact that Fortnite can be played and cross play amongst all systems, and now Xbox is doing the exact same thing with some of their games. Where Grounded is now be able to play on the Switch, the PlayStation 4 and 5, the PC, the Xbox Series uh, uh Xbox One, S and X, and we can all play together. That's that's fantastic. Fantastic. How can you be mad about that in any way, shape, or form as a gamer? Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> if you're if you're mad about Games being played everywhere. You're that same guy I told the story about. The guy was upset about bubbles. <laughs> if if you if you're upset about that, then you're upset about bubbles. Like goddamn bubbles. All right, chat. Only console warriors are mad. Yeah, I, I, I never understood it, PL. All right, tonight, um, I think we're going to go back into Fallout 76 because I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm hooked uh, into Fallout 76. So we'll play that a little bit more. Um, other than that, I do appreciate you very much for coming out and hanging out with us uh, in the mornings. We do this Monday through Thursday from 10 o'clock in the morning till noon Eastern. I uh, just read over news stories, have conversations, 
read but back and forth with chat i do appreciate you make sure you hit that like button down below make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you're not subscribed if you're watching this after the fact uh we do uploads we do live streams we do gameplay we do podcasts uh i, I do a lots of different shows i try to do uh different things bring on different content creators and stuff on wednesday night's podcast if we can get a guest lined up we do thursday night podcast with sarge we've been doing that for 10 years uh called generation x gaming we do lots of different things we do uploads i've been doing shorts um a short should go live in about 15 minutes or so talking about mikey barra uh and then the the full video of that goes live uh at at one o'clock so again appreciate you very much make sure you hit that like button subscribe and if you like to go above and beyond that become a member as little as five dollars you guys have a great rest of your afternoon i'll see you guys tonight at 8 p.m eastern for some gameplay peace